that's my boy. All right, so what we got going on today is, which we ain't gonna start on it today, I may just try to figure out what's going on here. My BMW, I've got a water leak somewhere. And it's right here, so it's gonna be passenger side wheel coming off the plastic in this area here so that could be anything it's running downhill and where I got the car I'm almost certain the guy told me they had changed the water pump I don't know their mechanical ability they had several BMWs there including this particular make and model they had several of the 335 I's and I'm gonna assume that they knew what they were doing. So far, so good. I mean, overall, the car's a good car. But I have been reading some some forums and stuff, and I have read that a couple of these cars have had the thermostat housing crack, maybe, and that's something I'm gonna have to check into. And just hoses and lines in general. I'm thinking. I'm almost certain that guy had told me they changed the water pump and it seemed like there was something else. I'm not even sure, but um, I got to get the cover off the belly pan and stuff, which I have to take it off anyway. I've got some other things going on with it, so I've got to get all that off and do some things there. So I have to be in there anyway, but at the same time, I hope it's just a hose or something. I hope. We'll get this thing off and I don't know if we'll do it today. I've got some other stuff going on too. Or maybe possibly do the brakes while I've got it on the lift. Because I'm going to need the brakes squared away here soon. It's got new pads on the front but it didn't change the rotors and it's still got that shake in the front. I may, I may just, it depends on what's going on here. I may just go ahead and, and pull the rotors front and rear, have them turn, maybe replace them. Go ahead and replace the pads front and rear and try to remedy some of the the things that i know is wrong with it because it needs rotors turned at least maybe replaced may not have an option to turn it so we'll get that done possibly if it's not not nothing too bad but if it's something that's going to be you know expensive to do to get it just you know where i can take it down the road we'll address that first and then we'll see how much we end up spending but all right that's where i'm at on the bmw we're going to be pulling the belly pan off of it and giving it a once over and see what we got leaking. All right, here we go. Hey guys and girls, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to do another episode of What's in the Box. Stay tuned. Here we go. So, today we've actually got, let's see, four. We've got two boxes and uh, two small envelope type deals. All right, we'll open the small ones first. The little packages, can I see what these are? All right. All right, so what this is, this is a Heim joint. So when we bought the, the e-brake handle for Dominic's car, the purple e-brake, if you saw that install, the actual slave cylinder where the brake fluid lives in that actual assembly, the slave cylinder, it's one of the cheaper ones, and I think the slave cylinder is bad. We went through all the lines, we got the wheel wood brakes, the cheapest replacement was the, the slave cylinder, that's the only functioning part up front, the mechanics of the, the e-brake handle, there's nothing that could be bad there to make it not hold pressure. And so the first part of this assembly is going to be the actual slave cylinder and it being the cheaper off-brand e-brake handle we're gonna we opted to go ahead and do the wheel wood upgrade so we bought a wheel wood slave cylinder well it didn't come with the heim joint that actually fits so this will actually fit to the little pin that goes to the handle so the handles here and so uh, and this piece actually goes to the threaded on piece to the slave. So when you pull it, that, you know, or put, actually pull it towards you, that pushes that handle back and that engages your 
it would break. So with this mechanism here, we had to have that because we don't, the one off the old one wouldn't fit the new piece. So I had to, had to have that. So that's one thing we had to have to upgrade on Dominic's e-brake set. And we're hoping that's the problem. That's what the first package is. And the second package. All right. So let's open this package. It's a box. So now we have three boxes. This is for the BMW. So on the BMW, on the side markers, you have uh, the factory ones are just a clear color, or whatever. Well, you can buy aftermarket ones that are a smoke color, which these have a blue wrapper across them to keep them protected until you get them installed. Well, these are the ones where you let's it, you know, on the, the actual fender, it replaces the existing one, and so it's like the ones that start here and light up down this way each time, as so it's your turn signal on the on the fender. That's what these are, the side fender. I guess the technical, the pretty much the way I explained it, they just light up in sequence, boom, boom, boom. And the smoke version, it's got the clear ones on it now, so that uh, that's going to be a smoke color, add some a little something different to it versus the clear side markers. And, um, so next we'll go, we'll go with the bigger one. Eh, trying to remember what we got. Yeah, 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 let's go with the, we'll go with the bigger box and we'll get it out of the way. The curiosity was driving me crazy. So, it's not that I had any preference at this point whether I used the cheap or expensive stuff. Obviously, you know, expensive, you're gonna, you're gonna, more than likely, you're gonna hit a home run every time. I like to find those hidden gems, those, those deals that, you know, the, the, Sounds too good to be true. I like to find the ones that sounds too good to be true, but it actually was kind of deals. Now, this is an eBay kit of, let me get it completely open here. I'm getting ahead of myself. And I know that every part of it's not going to be perfect. There's going to be some part of it that's just not usable. It's probably going to be just trash. You know, I put like a better word. It's not going to function as it was shown to or intended to. Okay, so on the BMW, it's actually a turbo car, but you probably get that by now. Okay, this is an upgrade. Mine has the aluminum charge pipe upgraded, but it has the one that just replaces the factory existing charge pipe. The aluminum upgraded, and it has two tubes up here that hooks back into the factory vent pipes or whatever. So what I opted to do, I was expecting this to possibly be okay and usable, but I didn't, I don't expect this piece. And I may be wrong, it may none of it fit, but I gave like 60 bucks for this. So we'll see. All right, so what we got is a 50 millimeter blow-off valve. So it's the tile, I guess you would call it the style or, or the, it's like the knockoff version of it. So this will actually hook into, I think this side is your throttle body. Yeah, because it takes the clip. Then your, your clamps here will lock on here and this will be your blow-off valve. So then we'll have the blow-off valve sound. Not very good it sounds. So we'll have the blow-off sound, the loud letting you know this car is coming through kind of deal. Um, and then letting you know this is a turbo car. We'll have added that to this twin turbo car and see, you know, whatever. But we're gonna see $67 I think is what I paid for this setup. I mean, generally, like a tile blow-off valve of this actual particular style and size, 50 millimeter and all that, those things are in the $300 range, I think. And I gave $67 for the blow-off valve and the charge pipe. 
and it come with the springs so um, I, I guess I'm assuming that's the spring that goes in this one it's not an extra I wouldn't think it may be so I'll have to find that out for sure and figure out I'll have to unbolt it all and take it apart and see if this is a spring that actually goes inside and moves as it should we'll see and so we hook our vacuum up here and this is our I'm assuming it's going to be our clamp to hold it on yeah no oh, that's our clamp for our boots so we got some, some clamps for our boot because this side actually boots up with a an actual uh, rubber boot and there's the clamps for that so if any of the parts are usable like I say this thing is 130 140 50 dollars so if this is usable functions bolts in everything hooks up to it as it should <coughs> then you know we saved 100 bucks you know if it doesn't it doesn't uh, if this part works and functions as it should save 300 dollars we're gonna find out we're gonna give it a shot we're gonna go the cheap route and see if it works if it don't we'll just discard this and chalk it up as one that didn't work and we're out $67. So we'll, uh, <coughs> we'll do an install video of the cheap version and, and kind of let you guys know what our experience was. I can get you the name of this brand. I can look it up, but it's on eBay. It's like 67 bucks. It's the knockoff 50 millimeter uh, blow off valve with the clamps and hardware and stuff. So, and maybe the spring is good. Maybe just the collar is good. If any of the parts are good, then that's less we had to spend on a one of the more expensive kits. Yeah, that's what was in that box. Again, this is the charge pop, the blow off valve, the hardware for the blow off valve. That's going to be your spring and your collar to lock it, um, this piece onto here. And then the clamps for the hose. The clip that goes here actually will come off the car. It will be on the car side. So we'll pull the clip off of the factory. Well, it's not factory, it's an aftermarket, but it's different. It doesn't take the blow off valve. But we'll pull the clip off of it and then we will change it out and put it on this one and install it. So the clip, it will come with this clip because that will be on your car. So that will actually be existing even on the factory. It should be on the factory side of your car. So, okay. So now, moving on. <coughs> we'll get this stuff kind of out of the way. Now have our final box. <clears throat> this one is ECS tuning. ECS tuning. Okay, now ECS tuning. I've bought a couple of items I think from these guys. This company is oriented with doing the BMW upgrades and accessories. You know, I've mentioned, I think if you've watched the video, I've mentioned the uh, the $1,500 worth of upgrades gets you 500 horse or so in these BMW 335i's. Well, this is something, <clears throat> this isn't directed toward that upgrade, but if you saw the video where I did the, the cone filters, where the back one was hard to get to, because I did the install without removing the, the whole back piece. Let's see if that's what we got going here. There's a, there's a fix for that. Again, ECS tuning. Bought it off their website. This is not an eBay purchase. This is from ECS tuning. So I bought the, and I wasn't sure on these how to purchase. I was kind of confused. So, I'll explain what I was confused about, and I, I may have to order some more stuff for this setup. I'm not sure just yet. So, what this is, is <clears throat> when I installed, okay, I get it now. When I installed the, the cone filters in the BMW, when I took the actual air box out, installed those cone filters, well, there's, People say that you know you can do it without having to remove that. The back tray section of the, look, so you got your engine bay in the very, very back, there's a big black plastic piece that goes all the way, and then there's that wire tray that goes hooked to it. So you end up having to unclip that wire tray 
And you kind of got to manipulate it down or up or forwards or backwards out of your way as you install that rear filter. So it's kind of in the way. Well, the, way, the preferred method is to take that black tray section actually comes out. And so what that is, is the air filter for the, the cabin of the car. So that's the cabin air filter that assembly controls, you know, the, the filtering the air going into your car. Okay, so Burger Motorsports, I actually got this from ECS Tuning, but you can get it from Burger Motorsports. This is one of their items. Okay, so at the front of that, there's two of these. If you look at your factory one, you'll see there's on the left and the right and the back of that section, not all the way up where the windshield wipers are, but down kind of midways, but the back of that big section, there'll be a, a two bolts, one on the far left, you know, and then one this distance, and there's another bolt. So you'll see where this actually will bolt up. Well, you unbolt those and take that whole plastic tray and assembly, all that comes out minus the cables, because the cables has, have to stay, and you take all that big section out, and this is installs directly under where the windshield wipers are. So that these two things go there and completely replace that whole section of plastic. So if you take your comb filters out or in, or if you get like we're going to add this, <coughs> we're going to we're going to take those comb filters out and. I was planning on if I do this or any other upgrades on that, I was going to take that whole tray out anyway because it's going to be easier because it was a pain to change that rear filter with that section on. So, and I can see the gains of moving that. So, while I had it out, while I had it all apart, the filters out and all that, why not go ahead and just do this and end up with a ton of extra space for down the road and you know these are these are filters themselves so they'll only be good for so long until you have to either take them out clean them i'm sure these are probably washable but i was concerned this is a confusion so like when you buy them it led me to an, another section saying you know like if you buy something it says people bought generally bought this when they bought these things or whatever you know so it had like some actual air filters some smaller air filters that looked like that these were just vents, you know, and maybe it should have an air filter behind it, maybe like a washable filter, replaceable thin filter. But these are actually almost like a cone air filter type. It's a mesh with some kind of material inside of it. So from what I'm seeing, you don't have to buy that. And, and I almost felt like I was supposed to, and I almost did, and they're not super cheap. They're, I'm thinking maybe 20 or 30 bucks. And I started to add it to the cart because I didn't, these look like they could be just vents. You know, you could just some type of vent with airflow and it should have a filter maybe behind it. But it's not. It's actually just like the mesh of a cone filter, like you, you know, like the red ones we put on the, the BMW. It's that type of mesh with something like a woven in kind of fiber in between it to catch particulates and stuff. So. I don't think it has to have that. Once I get it apart, I'll be able to tell more. And now that I've got some, you know, issues, water pump, and some other stuff I've got to address on the 335, I will do this first, I think. And if I end up needing these filters, I can get them on the way. So that way it's, you know, if I work on all the water pump and all that, and I end up just being a hose and I fix that, and I go to this, then, and I see that I have an air filter, my car's not down for an air filter, you know, so. Uh, I'll pull all this assembly off. It'll let me know. I'll be able to see and tell if this is something I need to add an air filter in. I don't think so. I th I'm going to say this probably just slips on, bolts back onto that area, and this is designed to be the filter itself, best I can see. So, quality wise, these are actually nicer than what I was thinking. I was, they're rubbery, so flexible. And I was thinking they were like a hard plastic, rigid, like your, you know, your plastic in the back of the engine bay would be. But they're not. Even the, the lip on these things are, you know, flexible. So it's like a soft rubber for the most part on the outside. A more rigid piece in here that I'm assuming drops down in there. And then the little tabs on the ears are flexible. So, and there's two of them, so that'll get both sides. So those look good this I'm gonna really as far as the structure 
the welds look okay and, and it looks like it wouldn't leak or anything. So, and the couplings, we can always get new couplings. The blow-off valve, I don't expect it to, to be of any quality because $67 for the entire kit versus $300 plus, you know. So, <coughs> so we got to get that, actually apply it and see how it works. Visually, it, it looks okay. I mean, there's one spot right here that I'm concerned with on this neck piece of this, but it has these fittings. I'm pretty sure nothing replaces these, but on the back you have a sensor here that has to be, when you take your factory one off, you have to watch for the sensor and make sure you unplug it. And then it has to come off of your old one onto the new one. And that, any of them you buy, even the, the most expensive ones, you have to take your old sensor off and move it. Now you can get another sensor, but most of them, and none that I've seen come with that sensor. So you have to pull it off of yours and put it onto this pipe. So today's haul, overall I would say that that should be good. These should be good. Not sure about these yet. Um, as far as visual, they look okay. They look fine. Fitment ultimately is the issue here. They can look absolutely amazing. If they do not fit, they're useless. That is what's in the box. So you got a pretty good idea of what we're going to next with this stuff. So you know what this is. All right, guys. Hey, thanks for watching our video. We'll see you on the next episode of What's in the Box. Thanks, guys. All right, guys. That was our episode of What's in the Box. Hey, if you want to see any more of our videos, if you will, hit the subscribe button right here on YouTube. And uh, hang in there with us. Stay tuned. We're going to be doing the installs on the 335i, all the stuff you saw on What's in the Box today. And, um, yeah, there's a lot of the stuff we're doing. We're doing some drift stuff. You can check out our other videos there. We did a LS swap and a GMC Canyon, some rear diffs and welding those up on IS300, the Wheelwood install on the IS300 as well, hydro e-brake for drifting on that, and a bunch of stuff on the 350Z, G35. Check out those videos. We've got a lot more coming. We've got a, a whole list of things of what we're doing. So, all right, um, follow us at... Uh, on Instagram, we're Chesser, it's at Chesser Drifting. All right, then we're Chesser Motorsports on Facebook. And if you want to shoot us an email, it's Chesser Enterprises at yahoo.com. And again, thank you guys. Thanks for everything. Thanks for watching our videos. Stick around, we're going to shoot some more. <laughs>